I just want to take a moment to thank all of my viewers and subscribers for your support of my channel. It really means a lot to me and it's helped me progress as an artist, which has been one of my main goals, not just to share the things that I learn, uh, but to help and to help you all overcome your fears, but it helps me overcome mine as well. So thank you so much for your comments and for your likes and for everything that, that you do to help my YouTube channel and, and myself grow and progress as an artist. Uh, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos and don't forget to leave a comment with any suggestions or questions that you have. I love to get any kind of feedback from you. It really helps me a lot. In this video, I wanted to try very thin lines of shellac to kind of see how the burns would would work. And I did a combination of wet burns and dry burns. And it was really interesting to see the differences between the two types of burns. Wet burns, in this video, you can really see how the when you set wet shellac on fire, it spreads and creates the cells where when you let it dry first and then you burn it afterwards, it constricts and creates cells that way. If anyone is new to my channel, I do mostly encaustic tutorials. So this is encaustic medium, which is beeswax that's mixed with resin. And it's also pigmented. So I add dry pigments to my encaustic medium to get these colors. And that's what I'm painting with. So when I use a torch or a heat gun, it's to fuse the wax to the wood base and also to the layers of wax beneath it. So that's what I'm doing in these first few layers. This is shellac that I've added to these little mini bottles, and the tips are very thin. So I'm using these to add as thin lines as I can possibly get with the, the shellac. And these are the wet burns that I'm trying to do. And you can see how even the thin lines kind of spread out as you set them on fire. The thinner you put the application, the less it spreads. And the thicker the application, the more it spreads when you do it wet like this. I added some alcohol inks to these in the little bottles to, to get a little bit more color. Now you can see how the dry burn is a little bit different. So I'm doing a close up here so you can hopefully kind of see it a little bit better, is how the line of shellac after it's dried, and I'm using my torch on it, it constricts and it becomes even thinner, which is the total opposite of what happens when I do a wet burn with this. It's a little bit harder to tell the difference between a wet and a dry burn when you have a thicker, bigger application. Like if, when I do thick lines, when I when I add a, just big, long, thick brush strokes and light it on fire, it's not as different uh, between a wet and a dry burn as it is with these little lines. It's kind of interesting how that is the case.
sometimes when I start my torch and turn down the flame, I end up turning it too low and it goes out. I try to get the flame as low as I can because I find that's when I really like the burns that I get. As I was working on this piece, the symbolism behind it kind of came to the forefront of my mind. It was almost kind of a subconscious thing, but the the meaning of it that that kind of came forward to me um, is a little bit religious in nature. So I'm going to put more of that in the description if you'd like to read it. Um, I won't go into it here in the in the video. Um, but uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more of kind of the symbolism behind the piece and and uh, what I was thinking as I was creating it and and some of the things that it taught me, um, you can check that out in the description. Now here's the final layer of of the shellac that I'm doing. I've got about three layers of shellac with wax in between. This time I added a couple layers of wax because I found, especially the black, it wasn't pigmented as, as much as I kind of wanted it to be, and so I needed to add another layer of the wax to kind of dilute the bottom layers a little bit more. You can still see them, but um, I wanted them to be a little bit more hidden. It's really interesting, these thin lines of shellac. I think what I'd like to do is next to use these in another piece is to have kind of a broad shellac burn with a lot of cells, but then right on top of it kind of put some of these thin lines to add a little bit more interest maybe, uh, maybe in a different color or something like that. To I think that that would work really well. So this is kind of the final step. I've done all the shellac that I wanted to do, um, but I decided to kind of go along with the, the religious theme that I mentioned before and the symbolism behind this piece to stamp with some of my text stamps into the surface of the wax and then fill them with oil paint. It was a little tricky doing this on top of some of the shellac lines. 
um, they, I had to be careful to kind of peel the stamp away very slowly and carefully. I left a little bit of the oil paint in those strokes to kind of add a little bit of movement to the piece too. So I, I was careful to get them those streaks as straight as I could, uh, but I wanted to, to leave them a little bit to, because I find that it does really add some movement. It makes it, makes it almost look um, alive a little bit. which is interesting when you mix it with the text. So it's like living, living words, living speech, which is kind of fun. And I was thinking of adding a phrase uh, to it, maybe in red or maybe in the contrasting white or black depending on where I decide to put it. Check out the description for a little bit more about that, and I'd love your feedback on that, like what you think, um, if you think I should or shouldn't. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.